So our Mauryan householder had a number of religions to choose from. They had the old Brahminical religion they could stick to, or they could convert to the new religion of Buddhism, or perhaps one of the other new religions that had started in the 6th century, like Jainism. But wait, no, what I just said was wrong in every respect. The choice that our Mauryan householder faced wasn't like that at all. Let me explain, focusing on Buddhism and Brahminical orthodoxy. So, Buddhism wasn't a new religion, and that's partly because it wasn't that new. Many of the ideas at the core of Buddhism are just the ideas that are, are taken up in Brahminical tradition, as it had developed by the time of the Buddha. We've already heard that the ideas of reincarnation, karma, and escape from rebirth, moksha, were all accepted by Brahminical orthodoxy before Buddha came along. And the same gods of Brahminical orthodoxy appear in Buddhist texts too. For example, Vishnu is said to have been the one who persuaded Buddha to start preaching after he'd become enlightened. Suppose our householder chose to become a Buddhist lay worshipper. That wouldn't be like choosing a new religion in a sense, because their practices, their religious practices, wouldn't change that much. Buddhists often kept the Brahminical practices wholesale, continuing their worship of Vishnu or Shiva. And they might even continue to do the same rituals, the same sacrifices. Buddha never tells them not to. Buddha only says that these sacrifices aren't helpful for getting to moksha, getting released from rebirth. But that idea that Buddha's telling them is nothing new. In fact, even some Vedic texts say that sacrifices are for getting what you want in this life or maybe the next life, and not for escaping from the cycle of life and death entirely. So what the Buddha's saying is not disparaging uh, Vedic sacrifice, Vedic tradition at all. The Buddha also tells his followers not to take part in sacrifices where they kill an animal. But once again, this is nothing new. As we've seen, followers of Brahminical orthodoxy had, by the Mauryan era, come to see part of their dharma, part of their duty as ahimsa, and for that reason had replaced the sacrificial animal with dough models. So, if you become a Buddhist, the ideas and practices of the old Brahminical tradition are still perfectly okay. You can still continue with them, by and large. It's not to say that the, the Buddha said nothing new. For example, his focus on the thought that all suffering is caused by desire seems to be a new focus, as does the ban on excessive asceticism. It's just that the practices and customs that we think of as startlingly new just weren't startlingly new. The Buddha wasn't starting a new conversation, he was taking part in a conversation that was already going on. And for the Mauryan householder, it wasn't a choice of, kind of abandoning the old practices and starting something completely new. It was a choice of adopting a new form of these old practices with a new twist and a new emphasis. So Buddhism wasn't a new religion because it wasn't really that new. Buddhism wasn't a new religion for an even more compelling reason. In a sense, it wasn't a separate religion at all. Islam and Christianity are separate religions. There's a lot of common ground, but you can convert from one to the other. They've got rival and total incompatible views of the world. But it doesn't seem like the same sort of conversion would have been possible in the Mauryan era. You could become a follower in Buddha and place, his faith, place your faith in his idea of how to get to moksha, but that's just not the same thing as placing your faith in Jesus, say. You can't be a Christian as a Muslim, but you can follow the Vedic rites and also follow Buddha. So Buddhism is not a new religion, instead it's a new sect. Actually, we have to be a little bit careful of overstating things here. There's the danger of falling into the opposite error. We mustn't think that ancient Buddhism is too much like a new religion, but we also mustn't think that it's too little like a new religion. Some forms of Buddhism that reach the West claim to be things that you can overlay on your beliefs, whatever they may be. These are forms of Buddhism that claim to be philosophies rather than religions. They don't actually require any commitment or belief, they say. They just require a change of practice. Ancient Buddhism wasn't like this. Supposing you followed Shiva and the sect of Shiva, and then you became a lay Buddhist worshipper, 
you'd have to change your mind about things. The Buddha made claims that were controversial and challenging and saw the structure of the universe in a different way. Saw the structure of Varna, for example, in a different way, where uh, the Brahminical Orthodoxy tends to treat Varna as hard written into the way the universe is. It's a natural fact that things are split up into four Varnas. Buddhists tended to think of them as kind of things people are happy with, but it's an invention of humans. It's a thing we have for convenience. And Buddha's pretty scathing about some of parts of Brahminical orthodoxy. So if you were a, a follower of the sect of Shiva in the Mauryan era and then you converted to become a Buddhist lay worshipper, you'd be giving up some stuff and you'd be adopting some new stuff. And a modern Western materialist atheist would have to change their, lot, their mind about an awful lot more in order to become an ancient Buddhist. My favourite way of thinking of Buddhism, Hinduism and Jainism in ancient India is the metaphor I've used throughout this episode. There's this conversation in ancient India. It starts with the Rishis who write the Vedas and others join it later on. Together, the people in this conversation are trying to find out the big truths. How is the universe structured? What happens when you die? What's the point of doing good? And the sages all agree on some things. Any conversation does this. We all need to make presuppositions if we're going to talk about anything interesting at all. If we didn't presuppose there was such a thing as football, we could never debate whether the Eagles will win the Super Bowl. If the ancient Indian sages didn't assume that there was reincarnation, karma and moksha, then they couldn't have had such a rigorous debate. So there is these, these common presuppositions and then the sages offer different, sometimes conflicting insights. And supporting one sage or another isn't like endorsing different Judeo-Christian religions, but it's also not something that can be done without any cost to your worldview at all. So this new sect of Buddhism changed things for our Mauryan householder. They had a choice to make, which their pre-Buddhist ancestors didn't. But whatever that choice was, it wasn't the choice between adopting a new religion and sticking to the old one. <laughs>